Hello and welcome to the Next 100 Days podcast. My name is Graham Arrowsmith. And my name is Kevin Appleby. So Graham, we're going to learn all about writing today. Here we are. And um, we are going to be talking to Neil Sheth. And Neil um, actually is living in Dubai, which is is quite posh, really, because, yes, you know, if you can afford to live in Dubai, you must be making pots of money. Um, but um, but he came from the financial uh, services or, 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 or the invest, investing background. Um, but he's done all kinds of things with SEO. And and now he helps thought leaders, don't you, Neil? Um, so that's so I mean, you you basically are, are a gift to anybody who really wants to have words written well, but also uh, to help people uh, uh, boost their, uh, shall we say, authority in a market. Mm. Yeah, that, that, I love the intro. Thank you so much. Looking forward to well, this. We chat. did it without writing it down, Neil. So I mean, um, I, I'm sure <laughs> one of your one of your team could have written it down better. No, I think I think natural is always more authentic. Love it. Well, it, it, I mean, at some stage you must have had um, a sort of um, a moment where you thought there is a market for this. What was that? What, what made you think? there's a business here because you're the founder of rightfully and it'd be interesting to know what was that seed that got you thinking yeah so it's a great question everything i've created up until now has always been something i've wanted but that is my big secret to building uh, a great product and it's almost like sometimes it's the opposite of what they say in terms of validation does the market want what you have and ultimately in my situation i needed it myself so i know the pain point right i know how hard it is i know how the person feels so um uh the backstory is uh my career in investment banking as a project manager within uh, a number of investment banks in london and that was almost my boring day job that uh, I was uh, I was essentially uh, implementing change for these organizations. So I was speaking to developers and designers and, and all of that stuff and and trying to implement things. And, and uh, in your head, it's a lot faster than it actually happens, right? So, but then I'm 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 at home, and I come across uh, obviously um, websites and launching websites and uh, and all these great businesses. And in 2009, I decided to launch my very first website. And I thought I would launch this amazing website because I'm a project manager. I know how to bring in developers. I know how to design, get get the good designers and, and launch something. And that was where all of my focus went. We went to launch five, six months later, spending 20, 20 odd thousand pounds um, and uh, realized that we couldn't even sell to you know, my parents, for God's sake, let alone uh, people. Well, they who know, know you know too well, it. don't they? So, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> they've got an excuse. <laughs> yeah, true. Well, exactly. That's getting pretty, so, pretty bad um, because uh, a lot of times you're selling your businesses while you, you sell to your parents, you sell to your friends. They're hard selling to real customers. But if we haven't even got as far as the real customers, that 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 is a problem. <laughs> That is, uh, that happens to be a major challenge. Yes. And so, um, we, I was basically crying for a week, depressed. And, uh, after that, I realized I needed to understand marketing. And so, uh, literally I became obsessed with this idea of let me launch this business, yeah. get a great website out there, get it in front of people rank on Google. That was where I, I focused on specialize in SEO over, over a number of years. And, uh, I mean, it didn't, it, it didn't turn out to be a, a huge win to begin with, but it was like my loss got smaller to another loss. And then it started turning to, a uh, actual money. And, and it still surprises me to this day, the, uh, the opportunity to, to get in front of someone who needs you and for them to buy without having a conversation. I like, uh, I'm still obsessed with that whole idea. And yeah. when we get a customer who's never come across us, it's just, you know, regardless of the amount, it's it's a nice dopamine effect, you know? Yeah. Um, and then obviously you see your bank balance go boom. Um, so so that's kind of what I did for myself for, for seven years. I was basically, up, I was banking by day, investment banking by day, and I had this other life by night where I actually could 
have an idea, launch something and yeah. grow something and, and make sales. And I was doing that for six or seven years. And I realized I was kind of burning out. And I tried to, I tried to speak to a number of marketing agencies. I said, Hey, you've got this website. I want you to grow it because I'm going to invest in banking. I can't kind of run this dual life. Yeah. Um, and I just wasn't impressed by the conversation. It was very generic. Like I remember my boss in investment banking in one of the banks I used to work at, he said, Neil, you need to know the details. Uh, you need to get in when, when I come to you and I ask for, I ask a particular question, I'm not looking for a generic answer. I need you to know that you, that you know the details. So I don't need to know the details like you do. Yeah. Right. And I remember that. And, and I felt that was the thing that was missing when I was speaking to the marketing agencies, they would give their marketing generic marketing plans, but they didn't really understand my business and the details behind my business. And I was like, I can't give you something you don't understand and you're not fully invested. And I realized it's hard to find that. Right. So unless you're paying shed loads of money. So um, I basically hired a few people and we did my own marketing. And then long story short, in 20, towards the end of 2016, and this was, this launching a website, launching a business was always my game plan to follow my passion and quit my job. That was always my game plan is, hey, I'm going to launch my own thing. I'm going to be my own boss. I'll, I'll grow my own business and live my own life on my own terms, right? Yeah. And the income just wouldn't, it just wouldn't be sufficient enough in these businesses to justify quitting a investment banking career, right? Yeah. However, over that time, I ended up building a skill that that I realized that, hey, why don't I just become a marketing agency and help the person that is me yeah. um, uh, and actually understand the details because I knew business, I knew how painful it was when you're putting... 5k 10k into your own business to for it to go flat right so i knew on the customer side and i went hold on i could just solve this problem because i've got i've built that skill set and in 2017 when we or 2016 when we found out we were having our firstborn she was almost my um the 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 kind of spark i needed to 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 have the guts and go look i'm gonna quit we're gonna go to zero income but at least i'm gonna do it before she's born uh, because imagine how that feels when she's born right now i've got two so to to support so um yeah and then we launched we we launched an seo agency so we focused on getting clients to the top of google uh and we you know we we're growing slowly over a number of years obviously COVID here and we uh and we started going the other way uh, but our clients really um valued us for the con for content and they said hey could you help us with our positioning could you help us with our messaging? Could you manage our blogs? Could you yeah. manage our emails? And that is where the idea behind Rightfully was born. And uh, and honestly, up until there, I was using a writer myself and I was going, hey, this is what I want to say. Here's some points. Here's probably a first draft. And when I sent it, uh, I remember the guy I used to work with, a guy called Michael, and he would send it back. And I was like, Michael, you're a genius. This is like exactly what I wanted to say. And I would use him uh, as uh, when I was running that other business, mm. and he would just elevate the message, and he would sprinkle in some edits that would just bring it to life and and shorten it, right? And so I knew as well, just from my own experience, what clients were asking us for. And I said, you know what, we need to solve this, and so we launched Rightfully, which is, uh, you know, we we call ourselves a thought leadership growth solution, but we. We help we help companies with positioning, messaging, and then crafting uh, their voice and and sharing their insights. They they know what they want to say, but they just don't know how to say. It, and that's really what we're focused you, on. I, I don't mind you, Kevin, but I quite like this guy. I mean, it, it, it can it, it can talk for England, but I mean, at the end <laughs> of the day, I mean, I, it's it's such a nice guy. I, I love the fact that I've been through the same pain. You know, you you launch something and it's and it's not you you haven't quite got the thing sorted out in your mind yet um but it leads to other things where you do make some money so and i i kind of empathize a lot with that uh neil and i think you know you're to be congratulated that you haven't given up and whether or not it was your first child your second child that was sort of like giving you that extra boost you've done it and you're and, and you're actually helping people and but i like the idea that michael whoever michael is um came along and actually perhaps uh painted something onto your canvas that said actually you know this thing the thing that he does is a business isn't it it's it's the idea of taking 
um, a concept. I mean, Kevin's in finance, uh, mm -hmm. uh, and and but he's also quite good with words. But the mm -hmm. typical, shall we say, technician doesn't always find a way to take their technical ability and, and turn it into something that's digestible by the okay. other side. And isn't that where you're fitting? That's exactly where we fit. So it's it's t and and honestly, like uh, even though this is my brand and business. I still I need help myself. So I, whenever I've got thought, I like to do a first draft. Sometimes I do a, a quick thought, and then I have someone in the team uh, who's not so close. It's it's like consultants, even project managers. That was uh, essentially my day job. Is what's yeah. your problem? Where's your pain? And because they're so close, you see it from a different uh, viewpoint, and you yeah. say, actually, this is what you're trying to say. The outcome is this. Yeah. The other stuff is fluff. Maybe you could talk about it later. But really, let's focus on the value here's your value and here's how to just uh hone down on that you know yeah and then that's some that's a skill that you i i noticed for instance that um on on uh, linkedin that you're connected to a number of people that that mm. that we've had on the show and, and, and actually personal friends so basically i'm i'm quite um you know i was quite interested in you on that basis but basically um the ability so i know that some of these people have got amazing ability to actually do the thing that you're doing but in their own right you know um, i've got one person in mind who was one of our earliest guests kevin and basically um the whole idea of rightfully is this i is that you can take a conversation with with um, a provider of something and turn it into i don't know um almost an, an elixir that that somebody is somebody's going to be magnetically attracted to them because it's it's appealing to to their own conversation that's going on in their own mind as some of the copywriting sort of things talk about but it, it's it's their motivations and so forth and you, you you're tapping into that because what is thought leadership if it's mm. lead thoughts? Mm. I love that. I love how you've explained that. Uh, you should come work with us. So, oh, I don't know about uh, that. I, I don't know. I, the hot, the heat in uh, Dubai would would, would seem. <laughs> and I won't be able to no, go down I, to Ellen Road, but I mean, you know, <laughs> apart from that, but. our team, our team is remote. I, I was just looking at the uh, the um, depressing. Manchester United score yesterday. I'm sure. Oh, Kevin. oh that brilliant yeah. score last Kevin. night! Yeah, but... <laughs> three nothing. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I, I can't I believe it. Oh, I'm a big Man U fan. Oh yeah, well, well, you would be because you're not from Manchester. So, babe, but I mean, what can I say? No, I mean, <laughs> but uh, no, no, seriously though. Right. We started the game with no centre backs, five full backs, and we beat them three nothing. <laughs> oh, I can't I, believe I, it. No, I, 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 there, I shouldn't have brought it up. My mistake. I shouldn't have brought this up. You can cut this no. bit out. Well, yeah. Well, you've got a lead. You've got a lead season ticket holder and a Newcastle, Newcastle uh, fan. So basically, you're never going to win on that. But um, <laughs> uh, no, I, I think you're going through it. We've all gone through it um, and, uh, with our clubs, and it, it will be good for Manchester United fans to go through it uh, because you will eventually you'll come out the other side, and hopefully, you won't destroy yourselves. But I, um, I, I am going through it. But back to your question, just on the yeah, I like the word of elixir. Um, yeah. So the um, essentially where we come in is. Uh, there's a number of places, but yeah. uh, we we can either work. So we either work with the business or we work with the individual. Yeah. Uh, the problem is is the same, right? They uh, and there's two things, and I think this is important for your audience um, to kind of separate in their mind. One is what you say, and the second is how you say it. So um, on on one side, we're crafting the positioning and the messaging around what do you want to say? What's the category that you want to own? If you want to own many categories, no one's going to remember you for one category, right? Which is why we want to own the thought leadership category, which is why we use words like um, uh, turn your business into a thought leader brand, right? Uh, and so we really just focus on on that category. And then it's what content do you want to talk about within that category? So that's around the what do you want to say? Yeah. And then um, the the other side is how do you want to say it? And so here we focus on, on tone of voice. So when you hear um, a business or a leader saying, yeah, I'm not sure how to say it. I know what I want to say, but I'm not sure how. I'm not sure how it can come across compelling. Or um, our content, this is a problem we solve a lot, is 
we're just not consistent across our online presence, even when they come to our hotel, for instance, or when they come to visit us in person. The the experience is off. It's just not the same. And so this is really focused around tone of voice. Yeah. So it's it's not what you say, it's how you say. It. And this is where we come in. We so we're, whoever we work with, whether it's business or an individual, we're really trying to understand a where they want to be placed in their in their end customer's mind. Yeah. And then B is how do they want to come across? And often when we're working with a founder. Uh, who with a small team and it's just them it's often the tone of voice is the founder's tone of voice him or her's tone of voice but when we're working with a business and a large business it's now this bigger thing so uh, generally the problem is the same but it's uh, we're just applying it either to a business or an individual and then it's and then you go deeper into okay how do you want to how do you want to share what do you want to share that's compelling that actually grabs interest and often uh, it, just keeping it super simple is um, is often the best strategy because that's how people like to digest it is as if they're you know uh, yeah. if it's written like for a ten year old. Yeah, that I couldn't agree with you more. I mean, the 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 laws of copywriting are, are you, you know the more and more big words that you use, the less and less communication mm-hmm. you're making, and 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 the end of the and it's almost like. Again, if I'm a technician, then I'm using those big words because I understand them and it's part of my lexicon. But the point is your clients don't often because you're solving a problem for a client and they don't see things in those big words. And I think you're right. If if you can write for that kind of 10, 11 year old person at that level, um, they're more than capable of of reading something and, and digesting it. And I think that's the level at which you should be able to write and communicate, which is probably why uh, Michael wrote in shorter sentences and 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 almost like uh, created uh, images in your mind that enabled you to digest very, very quickly the sort of thoughts that um, you were expressing. I, I mean, Kevin. I mean, you 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 help with um, grow CFO, etc. And you have to presumably you have to write one or two things. Write quite a lot, actually. But I I, I recognise in myself that probably writing isn't my strongest skill. Um, I've had feedback for a long time. I'm going back right back to the beginning of my consulting career with PwC. Mm. Um, I know that of the various strengths you've got to have to be consultant, project manager, et cetera. Writing was probably my weakest one. So mm-hmm. you know, the the advent of lots of tools that can help you do it better, really good for me. And uh, mm-hmm. one one thing I use regularly is, is something called Grammarly. I got it originally just because it was a, a great spell checker. Went to the pro version, and it gives you all sorts of suggestions for rewriting stuff number of times that it takes words unnecessary words that i put down rephrases things in a much better way and there's a real real talent to coming over properly just because you are the thought leader in something does not mean that you can necessarily put your thought leadership across clearly and concisely which is where neil's but, coming in i guess though isn't it Actually, Neil, yeah, that leads yeah, me to... That's, to, that's to, exactly right. I find tools that can help me. In your organisation, what, what sort of tools do you use that can help? Is it piled down to just having the right talented individuals or are, are you using software to, to, to help you along the way? So, yeah, we, we use a number of tools um, and it really depends on what we're trying to do. So, for instance, if we are creating content that... The purpose is to rank on, on Google uh, and what we call is SEO blogs, search engine optimized blogs. Then we're using tools like SEMrush, Ahrefs, Google Keyword Planner, identifying what keywords, what's pe- what basically what people are searching for. So we can look inside their mind, yeah. understand the market, and then create content around um, their, their, their needs, right? Yeah. Uh, that's also a really good tool just from a business point of view, regardless of creating content, just to understand your audience and, and look for validation if you're launching a new product or service. Um, then we'll use things like Grammarly as well. Grammarly is a great tool. We actually ask our writers to use that um, before they send it to a, our internal team to review and edit. So, And then we will Grammarly check it as well, just as a, a safeguard. And more importantly, we have an editor who's looking at the tone of voice, either of the thought leader 
or the brand. And then we're sense checking from a tone of voice. We're, we're looking at um, the, the, the use of words and, and, and the layouts uh, and things like that. Um, and then we're uh, simply sending it to uh, the client on the back of it. So from a tools perspective, that's probably our our main tool. We do use uh, Copyscape. That's a good plagiarism tool. So we'll use that and just make sure everything is unique uh, for the client. Uh, and so we'll then we'll basically send them content that's been Grammarly checked. It's been internally review edited checked. It's been plagiarism checked. Um, and then we'll send it to the client for review and review and edit. So that's that's, that's interesting because the chances are that um, I, I've never used the plagiarism checked. I don't know if you, I'm sure most of the content that we produce, Kevin, is um, is um, is plagiarist free. Um, but uh, <laughs> until we start talking about Man United and stuff like that, then, then it's, <laughs> it's probably been said before. <laughs> but yeah. times over. but, um, but um, seriously, th- that works. Does it? What? Just search the internet really quickly and say, "I've seen these fr- this phrase before," and it says, "Stop! Don't use it." Yeah, I mean, it's it's more it's checking that ha- has this paragraph or has sentences being used across the internet and honestly we found uh in some cases yes and we know and then we've identified writers that are just copying so what we tend to do with our team is we won't onboard a writer for a client until they've worked for us and so we we de-risk the situation for a client and we don't ever want to be in a situation where you know client's not happy so we make sure we're happy and then client and then writer and the and ultimately, the more a writer has worked with us, they understand our process. They understand how we expect the quality to be. And and we're training our own writers. And after we've sent them 20 projects to work on, 20 pieces of content, 30, they're just getting better and better over time. And from our point of view, our editing is is becoming less and less and less. And that's where we want to be with a writer. We want to we want to we want to have a great brief for from a client, or we're creating the brief for a client, and we want to have a writer executing that on tone, on brand, just like really elegantly the whole process as well as the content at the end of it. So I guess what I've explained to you is how we work um, with human writers today. And then um, I say tomorrow, but at some point in the next 20 to 45 days, depending on how many bugs we find, um, we're launching a thought leadership app where uh, we will uh, enable a an organization or an individual to share their insights, share their thoughts with the use of their phone, have our app create the first draft with their actual thoughts, as you guys were saying earlier, yeah. thought leader should come from your thoughts. Yeah. Sharon says that our app would create the first draft and then it would hit our team to quickly human edit and send it back. So uh, to to elevate the message and and to, so to make it this easy. Is, is this, this would be a, like a subscription service? Correct. So we're on Rightfully, you'll see on the homepage, there's uh a pack three packages but ultimately this is called say story uh you say and your story gets written uh okay. that was the idea behind the name and um uh and it works, uh, it works. <laughs> keep it simple right <laughs> yeah i, I yes yeah, i mean so so okay so basically i i, I after this i'm going for my uh, ten thousand step walk and I, I do it try to do it every day and so basically on the way around i tend to be listening to podcasts or, or, or some other things but basically um, I could actually be dictating some ideas about my business, which is all about marketing to the affluent. Okay. Mm-hmm. So it's things that I've got in my mind, I want to get it out. And and often when you are going around, you come up with some reasonably good ideas because you're out in the fresh air and so forth. Okay. It's like Kevin walking his dogs and so forth. That, that's what, what you do, where you get your great ideas, Kevin. Well, one every seven months. But basically, <laughs> no, no, seriously, though, um, um, you know, what a, at that moment, you just probably, it might be go- gobbledygook when it comes into the, tape though won't it neil because at the end of the day it, it they're thoughts but they're not necessarily wrapped together in an elegant way yeah agreed so uh with what you just described there that use case where you just share some thoughts that's a future thing that we've got planned ah. but really uh the problem that, and you you kind of uh, nailed some of that in the beginning which is you walk around and you go huh i've had this thought and often and like i said in the beginning I'm I'm simply creating things that I do. So 
uh, when I'm out and about and I'm meeting a client and they talk about something interesting, or you know, we've had a uh, we've had a good conversation here, and I'll be I'll be thinking about like one thing you're making me think about is the plagiarism is mm. how deep does it go, right? And so there might be a thought I have and go, hmm, maybe I need to talk about that. People don't really sh- talk about that type of thing yeah. in our space. Yeah. So but around that topic, so with our tour, I'll be able to say here, I'll be able to share my thoughts on the topic that I want to talk about. Uh, our app would then ask you uh, three to five questions, depending on the channel that you're posting on. Let's say it's for LinkedIn. It yeah. might ask three questions. And essentially, it's interviewing you in one minute, right? And you share your thoughts for each question. We create The app creates the first draft. And you might actually be happy with that and go, you know what, let me just reword this. And now I'm good with that. Or you may go, actually, I want someone to review this on my behalf. I'm busy. I've got leads to uh, go watch and I want rightfully to human edit. Uh, and and so we'll then uh, we'll then bring it to life. So that's the idea is and and how I do that today is I might share that with my team over Slack. I'll voice note. I'll go, hey, guys, I really want us to create a piece um, around this topic and I'll voice note my thoughts. Uh, sometimes I'll write stuff, but often I'll voice note something. And so I'm essentially taking that workflow, which we know works. Yeah. And uh, and the moment, here's the thing, you guys, is the moment I ask a client to share their thoughts on email, suddenly they're taking unstructured thoughts and they're trying to structure it. And it's why our team get really bad briefs from clients. And a brief actually is meant to be like this, all-encompassing, here's what I need and here's the details. Yeah. And I would say nine times out of 10, a brief ends up being too brief. But yeah. the moment I ask a client to share their thoughts, suddenly I'm getting richness of context, uh, ideas. Sometimes they might go into a different space and a new idea might come. I'm getting these really rich thoughts. And that's what we're trying to um, keep ultimately. Because, you know, the, the copywriting thing about entering the conversation got already going on in somebody's mind. Hmm. Nobody's really dissected that in in my experience. It, it's it's a phrase that a lot of people use, but the logic of it is that you know the conversation. It, it, it's not so much of a converse, conversation, but a series of jumbled thoughts. Sometimes it's a conversation. I mean, sometimes there's a there's an elegance to it because you're thinking it through. But more often, it's a snippet of thought here that you're thinking. Got to come back to that one, and and it's up there somewhere. And and it does come back into it's like now I'm talking to you thinking that actually it, it's in inefficient just saying enter the conversation going on in somebody's mind in isn't a conversation it's a thought that's going on in their mind they're worried about something they want something to happen um, and you know if you're then you've got some method that takes that out of your mind in a way that through speech um and that may have its limitations anyway um and but but nonetheless it's it's a start if that comes out in that way then there's a decent chance that at some stage through your uh innate cleverness to to put it all together to make a really coherent um thought mm-hmm. that then becomes leadership and I, I i do you know what kevin this has been one of the most amazing conversations because i think you're onto something there's a a piece of genius in here definitely oh definitely yeah i mean do you feel it neil or is it you're just way too modest as a man united fan uh, to (laughs) admit to that i mean but there there's genius with what you're doing but also with your team as well because i know that your team's pretty smart um and chances are smarter than you which is you know more about you but the but the end of the day you've got this ability to do this i think i really really appreciate that that's, that's really nice of you it's funny um being in dubai uh i remember when i first came here in my first few months and they said neil you need to be more blink and that's what they want here is stop selling so modestly and just being honest they go you need to be more flashy and out there and go boo and that's not me as a person so it's re- it's 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 funny uh hearing you say that um yeah. i know like inherently i know uh you know i've got a really great team i'm really proud to say uh, but you know my team is just a bunch of geniuses put together yeah 
who then do, who then create something special. And here's the thing: we don't get it right every time, but every time we get it wrong, oh my god, the next time because of that learning. So we have this culture in our team. I'm like, celebrate your your losses because I wouldn't be here if I hadn't lost twenty grand in two thousand and nine. So every time we we lose here, and uh, you know we don't necessarily get it right for for a client, then we go, okay, what what could we have done here? What what could we have changed here? And because we're and and here's the thing for those listening in, um, thinking that what could we, yeah, what's there to take away here? I would say there's there's that focus around the one thing and if that's all you do what you end up doing is you go really deep and you identify an area for you to grow and you identify an area for you to drive value for both sides and here's the thing that's all I'm doing and I'm sure I'm sure Kevin will appreciate this as an as a project manager because all I'm trying to do in in my team as a as a previous project manager is to find efficiency in our process where we win for the client and we win for ourselves and what i mean by that is if you think about what i've just explained here with our app the way we do that today or as we say in the project management space our 2b model today is we we plan content we interview the client actually scheduling that interview having that interview trying to get their thoughts is really really painful and i'm like why why is it not easy for us to look inside their mind and what they say is neil yeah you guys you guys create the content our client says create create our content uh, we trust you and we're like hold on we need we need the expert we need the thought leader who's involved ah oh, we don't have time we can't have calls and we're like okay we don't really want to be a generic thought leadership provider you know so what what we're trying to do here is just find efficiency in this inefficient world which is, it- is and you just need your thoughts is it I mean, we've discussed this before, Kevin, but the, it, it's it's not necessary. If you go to the MD, you'll get an MD's view potentially. And like you said, he's probably very busy. And although he's possibly got it in there, and, and if he's a sort of a singleton, then then you don't really have a choice. But if you've got a slightly bigger company where you're trying to sort of get to the, I don't know, to some of the thoughts that will help that company project a, a better um, um, solution or whatever the right word is, then you might want to go to their salespeople. You might want to go to their customer services people, et cetera, and, allow, and ask them the three questions and get something out of them that, that enables you to get a much rounded opinion of the of the entity as opposed to the individual. So I love this comment. And, and that's because uh, unless you're in our space, you don't understand how big a problem this is. So yeah. in order to create really diverse content, you need to go to a diverse group of people right? But today, in order to do that, you need to literally, we would need to interview or do roundtables or do workshops. And uh, A, that's highly intensive. B, what that means is it's highly expensive. Three, a client would never want to pay for that, right? And and it's just too time consuming for what you're trying to do. However, uh, that is the the, one of the top three problems we want to, we want to solve which is imagine a piece, a thought leadership piece, where it's for one brand, uh, but they have an opinion from someone sitting in Bolivia, someone in their team from India, and someone in Dubai, right? They're going to get really culturally different perspectives. With our solution, say story, you can send one link to all three different people, and they'll share their insights. And then we create the first piece with the app, and then we human edit. So this is really um really what we want to start to do is is not just create like boring the the usual type of content like actually involve the team actually involve the different cultures and different perspectives and different backgrounds uh different religions like within within the piece and you're you're going to end up getting something that's a lot more appealing to an audience because your audience is no longer you know, male who's between the ages of 25, 30, but you're, you're often talking to multiple people from different backgrounds who may resonate with this and may not resonate, but now you're able to encapsulate all of that um, in one place. So this is really, uh, really, that is really, really appeal- appealing, Neil. I, I'm thinking of the, the stuff that I, I would put together, which is in the, the oh, finance yeah. world, talking oh, wow. to finance leaders. Now, mm. They are global. 
They come from all of those different cultures that you've just mentioned, and they've all got different ways of thinking, different ways of doing things. When I write something, I write it from my perspective, from my experiences, which compared to the audience are very, very narrow. So I, I love what you're saying. Oh, I love that. I love that perspective. Yeah, I mean, if, if only you could replicate Kevin in, in, in Bolivia and Dubai and all these other places. <laughs> I mean, what would you be like, Kevin? I mean, the Kevin, Apple, uh, the Bolivian Kevin Appleby. I don't know what you'd be like, Kevin. Bling, bling Kevin? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like that. Yeah, it'd be a Bling actually, Kevin. Actually, Kevin, you should be a lot more Bling with Newcastle United. Yeah, well, I know. I, I don't go. Don't. It's a that's a rabbit hole. Um, but <laughs> yeah. um, okay. seriously, because he he could talk for England on that subject. But um, <laughs> no, 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 you we're doing it without being Bling. <laughs> oh, Lord. Um, all this money uh, from uh, it's not from Dubai, is it, Kevin? Is, is, did you, didn't you get it from the Middle East somewhere? I can't remember where, exactly. Uh, where it was Saudi, it was in the first place by sticking the oil price up, didn't they? So it's our oh, money. Is it, oh, is it Saudi money? All oh, oh, right, okay. <laughs> have a lot of money on football at the moment, but anyway, um, good luck to them. So um, back to you, Neil. I mean, this. So you've got this app coming up, and and you've got rightfully. Um, I really do think you're tapping into a really interesting thing and you want to make thought leadership yours. I'm, I'm, I'm struggling a little bit with that, but I understand why you'd want to go down that way because it's a thing, but it's a very generic thing, isn't it? I mean, everybody, at some stage, everybody wants to have that. But um, I, I, I like the idea that you're going to try and improve on that area. Do you ever think you'll narrow that down to, I don't know, um, insurance people or, you know, a, a particular vertical? Yeah, tell me, what did you mean by you're struggling with that? Well, I'm um, anything that um, um, is buckshot as, as opposed to rifle shot. Then it, it, it wor the worry is that you are, um, and I suppose in a way, it's the the answer to the re original question, which was all about um, having too many people's voices heard to create a thought leadership uh, uh, suggestion. Now, I think that's a good idea. But but ultimately, you have to have that one voice. Now, that's where your skill would come in. Um, but the um, I uh, my concern would be that you're all things to everybody and nothing to anyone. Mm, I like that. So yeah, the, like that. and and that I I don't think you will be as it happens because I think you've you've picked out a very narrow piece that says it's like we've had other people on this podcast. Um, who've looked at authority um and and you know and you know through books for instance and i think that it's it's kind of similar but it's it's not the same where i think you're taking this is in a really exciting way because it's almost like taking it's this almost uh um, Elon Musk idea of having having a, something in your brain or whatever that you can you can improve the brain's functionality through a chip embedment and in, in in your brain. If there's a way in which you can get out of people their thoughts and structure them for a positive effect with other, with their clients or potential clients, you'll be able to write your own check because nobody's mm -hmm. done it. Nobody's really done that. Talked about it. But, you know, and, and the best copywriters potentially in the world have that ability, you know, um, but some of them are dead now um, and some of them are near dead. But the point is, it, it, it is really very, very difficult to do. Yeah, um, I can tell that you're really deeply thinking about this because what you've just said there is all the things we're, th we're, we're, we're thinking about. Um, so one thing you just said there, and I like the challenge and I'll kind of just share my thoughts on this as if we're in a in a pub having a conversation um, is so it's hard to take unstructured thoughts and turn that into structured thoughts, um, which is uh, imagine some, you know, uh, someone picking up WhatsApp and then sending you this long ass uh, audio message and like, so what am I meant to do with this? What, where do we go with this? So in our first version, we want to, we, we need to, we need to, we need to kind of workshop them, right? So we need to get them focused around a topic. Yeah. Now, now that's not that's that doesn't mean these people are going to stay structured within our, yeah. our our walls. But that's where our first version comes in. We want to get them around a topic. We want to ask them specific questions. the The cleverer the question, the cleverer the the better the output. And so we talk about clever questions. So we, as a team and an app, a technology, we have to get better at question 
uh, asking good questions. This is why interviewing and asking a client five whys and going deeper and deeper and, and moving them around where you need to move them, this is where the value is. Yeah. And honestly, we don't want to replace that in some circumstances uh, where, there, where, there needs, where there needs to be that exploration. But in other circumstances where they've got an insight, they want to share it, it's we should be able to solve that, right? Yeah. Um, however, your your uh, your your insight about this the taking someone's unstructured thoughts, absolutely. We want to be able to solve that where someone can go for a walk with their dog and go, I just want to talk about something here. I don't know what it is, but I just want to talk about it. And then within that, start to dissect the topics and start to dissect the the insights and go okay where where do we go with this that honestly that requires a lot of big thinking yeah. um so i i will we will likely start to move that but i need to get the first version out and make sure that's working um your point around being everything to everyone and and you know you end up being nothing to no one absolutely um i'm a big believer in that as well yeah. Uh, and funny enough, uh, when I first started the business, it was I spent one year, one and a half years going, what's my niche? Who's my niche? Should we do insurance? Should we do legal? Should we do? And, and I ended up settling on our niche is solving the problem. Mm -hmm. Right. And back then the problem was, hey, you want to get to the top of Google? I'm going to get you to the top of Google. The actual methodology behind it is still the same. Yeah. Uh, it, that's no different. So I've kind of because our clients you'll see from our website rightfully is they're really random like honestly they're really random and i'm proud that they're random because um it, you almost learn something from here could be applied down here and you start to build this uh robustness that that like when i meet a business they'll go how did you how did you do how did you understand what we did so like really quickly or how do you point out there's a problem here or I might say, like yesterday, I said to a business, I said, I feel like your business model is broken because of blah, 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 blah. And they would go, and I've got no experience in the industry, but I know another business that's in a, they've done something similar, but in a different space. And I can, I can kind of put that together. So you almost start to, you almost build like different ideas and you can kind of stand out. Now, when we launch, here's what we're actually going to do. We are absolutely going to try and find out what we call the early adopters when you're launching a tech startup you need to you need to appeal to your early adopters there's people that get it uh like you you're like oh i see the value i could apply it and i could i could actually get it going right and then there's people who are slightly skeptical or they're not sure and they will only come on board after your first 100 customers have come on board so we're gonna have to so i sat down the other day uh with a with a lawyer and she said oh my god she goes, yeah, I think you just need to go to all law people. And so the more conversations I have with people who are really enthusiastic about it, I'm just going to end up going speaking to those more people because yeah. I know we can just gain more traction a lot more quicker. However, um, at some point we start to go like that. But yes, I'm, we're in the early days, we're just going to have these conversations. We're going to give it to people. And then the people that are just super enthusiastic, they don't need like two hours of calls for me to explain. They're just jumping on it and they're going, wow, I, I'm doing this. I'm creating my content. It's with rightfully to edit. We will slowly move our focus, the team's focus and go, let's just help these guys out, you know? And, uh, and then at some point we might go, okay, let's go see who's close to a lawyer who's sure. You know, and then we'll start to branch out like that. But yes, absolutely. Oh, I think my daughter would love you uh, as a lawyer. That's, and um, I, I genuinely think there are a lot of very, very, um, I, I, it's a really smart move. Um, there's no question about that. I mean, I mean, and finance people could potentially be, uh, I like, you know, I'm coming around right to the fact that you're actually, that, you know, we, you can define markets vertically as well as horizontally. And you, you've definitely got a horizontal um, uh, focus in mind. But I think there's, there's, it's just how you can take that um, uh, uh, to market in a really, really successful way. Because it, it's got a couple more knots on the end of this market that you might, I'm sure that you potentially in your wildest dreams are maybe several more knots on the, on the market because it's affecting everyone, but there's very, very few products in the world that can do that. Water's probably one of them. We all need it. And, but the, you know, at the end of the day, it's that type of, um, um, of thinking, but 
we, we've kind of run out of time, Neil, because basically we, we don't like Man United fans anyway. And so, and, and, and well, you know, what can I say? But you haven't been rubbish. You've been awesome, actually. Um, I don't mind you, Kevin. What do you, what do you think to him? I think he's brilliant. Yeah. And you know, I am a regular dog walker. Do all my best thinking when I'm walking the dogs. You know, by the time I get back and sit down at the desk, it's all disappeared. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, good point. <laughs> Uh, I, I, one thought I had, uh, Neil, was 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 that basically on my way around, I'll be I'll be listening to some, you know, I don't know, it might have been something from Dan Kennedy, but and, and I'm thinking, oh, that's, that Kennedy's really smart, and 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 oh, and, and, it, and it goes into my mind, think this is how I can do it, and to Kevin's point, I'll often get back, and then the day job takes off, and and it's that kind of, it's the it's that immediacy of stop, right, open up the app download some ideas and and basically i just think uh, oh this is how this logical thing can actually happen in my industry you're on to something um i love what you're trying to do um uh we'll have you back when your app um uh, becomes a reality um if you, as, as long as you're happy I, I, yeah i would love to be on here and, and uh as soon as we've done a beta launch i will yeah. i'll share it with you Good. um you know ultimately we we we're trying to solve there's geniuses out there like yourselves um who just just need just a small bit of help to get those thoughts out there for the world to to read so um yeah well i don't, honestly, honestly i don't think i think I'm, I'm as close to a man united fan that i'll ever get um, <laughs> you know, i mean that um mm -hmm. uh, and you're in dubai so that's that's good enough for my point. <laughs> that's not too close yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no no it's not true it's not true i, I have some uh, good uh, man united fans look um as friends so basically all i would say to you is neil thank you very much indeed for joining us today on the next 100 days podcast <laughs>